Hi, everyone. So my name is Shai Kenan, and today we are going to talk about React 360. A bit about myself. I'm a software developer at a company called 500 Tech. I work mainly with React and React Native, and yes, I do love CSS. I provide consulting services to companies, and I teach various courses, such as data visualizations, advanced CSS, React, Redux, state management. I also lead the React Israel Meetup community with more than 2,500 20, members. So if you are around, I'm more, more than happy to invite you to our monthly Meetup session. Today, I'm here to talk to you about React 360. We will start with the basic concepts of virtual reality, learn how to get started with React 360, and even learn a new approach for integrating uh, 3D views into React.js. By the end of this talk, you will know when to use React 360 and how to do it, how to get started with 3.js, and develop 3D experiences in your web browsers. Virtual reality is being used in many industries. Besides games, VR is used in fields such as medicine, education, movies, architectures, ar architecture, travel, military preparation, retail, and much, much more. Because of its ability to completely immerse you in a scene, the possibilities are endless. It all goes back to something called lucid dreaming. A lucid dream is a dream in which the dreamer is aware of dreaming and can do anything, even fly or learn Kung Fu, like the Matrix. The first known mention of lucid dreaming was in the ancient Sanskrit text of Mandyuka Upanishad around 500 BC. Then, around 415 BC, St. Augustine presented to us the first well-known report of lucid dreaming. He shared the story of a friend who dreamed he was hanging out with a guy in heaven, and the guy kept reminding him that he was actually asleep. The first published mention of lucid dreaming and its scientific potential was by this guy with the long name in 1867, and he wrote a book called Dreams and the Means of Directing Them. In 1838, Charles Whitstone invented the stereoscope. He found that if you put two slightly different images next to each other, the brain can turn them into a 3D image. This brought up something called virtual tourism. For the first time, people could actually see and experience places they have only dreamed about. In 1935, Stanley Weinbaum released Pygmalion's Spectacles, a story about a pair of goggles that can let a person feel like they are in a fictional world. This is considered the first comp comprehensive model for virtual reality. For the next several decades, we got things like the Sensorama, the old Ultimate Display, NASA's Virtual Visual Environment Display, Sega VR, and the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Finally, in 1987, Jaron Lanyard invented the term virtual reality. And since then, we have, we've had things like Google Cardboard, Google Daydream, and the Samsung Gear VR, all of which are very basic but affordable devices. Then we got the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and the PlayStation VR that gives us a rich experience, but with an expensive price tag. Those devices require external computing power and tracking sensors, and as a result, they are not portable. Computing systems of all sorts are getting smaller, cheaper, and much more efficient, and virtual reality is no different. A couple of standalone VR systems will arrive this year, and they will be able to advance virtual reality as a mainstream consumer technology. One of them is the Oculus Go that was already released, I think it was a month ago. The Go is offering a standalone experience, but without positional tracking, meaning that the user will always be at the center of the scene, but with a 360-degree view. Oculus is also working on a second standalone headset, uh, codenamed Santa Cruz. This headset will offer positional tracking using on-headset trackers, and another thing called six degrees of freedom. It means that the headset recognizes your hand movement, so you can interact with objects. And there is a, a third headset that HTC is working on. It's called the HTC Vive Focus. This, this headset will also offer positional tracking and six degrees of freedom. 
These three headsets are a big step towards virtual reality becoming a true mainstream technology. So now, after understanding how it all started, we can talk about virtual reality concepts, things that we as developers must know if we want to build a virtual reality application. So what is virtual reality in a nutshell? Visual, vir visual virtual reality is made up of two things, stereoscopic imaging and movement tracking. So let's look at these two images. Are they identical? They seem identical, but if you look closely, you can see some difference. So I've highlighted one for you. Can you notice the figure on the background, on the right? Stereoscopic imaging images are based on how the human brain works. It takes two images that show the same content, but from a slightly different point of view. The offset of these images corresponds to the distance between our eyes. This dis distance is called interpupillary distance, or IPD for short. In this way, we simulate the way we see the world naturally, and it gives us the perception of 3D depth. Headset lenses are an integral part of the virtual reality experience. And why do we use headset lenses? Because they position the images on the screen at the exact distance that, that, that we need in order to get this desired effect, this stereoscopic effect. But VR lenses are thick, and they cause a distortion. The square that you see on the left looks caved in through the lenses. The outcome looks like what we see on the right. So to compensate for this, we give images that are rounded out. On the left, you can see a compensated image before the lenses. And on the right, this is the final desired image. So to sum up stereoscopic imaging, by showing two slightly different images to each eye using special lenses, we get the effect of depth. Besides stereoscopic imaging, the second thing we need in order to complete the illusion of virtual space is to track the movement of our body. All VR devices track head movement so we can look around. Some devices, the more expensive ones like HTC Vive uh, or Oculus Rift, they track body movement so we can move around, we can walk around the scene. Of course, the more tracking sensors that you have, the better the illusion of reality. Last year, Facebook announced the launch of React 360, a new JavaScript framework based on 3.js and React Native. React 360 allows developers to build virtual reality experiences with the help of JavaScript. And as the name implies, React 360 uses the same concepts as Facebook existing React framework for web or for uh, mobile. Just like we React for standard web apps, VR developers can now use the same declarative model to build applications for the 360 degree experiences. Just like in animation, VR apps need to be rendered at 60 frames per second. And this is something that React Native has already solved for us. It's important to know, again, that React 360 is based on 3.js and React Native. Most of the, component, the components that we use are React Native components, and the 3D rendering engine is the 3.js rendering engine. For those of you who are not familiar with 3.js, 3.js is a cross-browser JavaScript library used for displaying animated 3D graphics. Around 2008, Ricardo Cabello decided that it's too difficult to build those experiences using a WebGL, so he wrote a JavaScript uh, abstraction for that. And since then, this is the leading uh, library for those experiences. So let's look at some 3.js examples from the web.
Okay, so all of these demos are pretty old, but still great. And most of them works at 60 frames per second, even on your mobile phones. So let's get started with, with React 360. We'll begin by installing a tool that we need. We will install React 360 CLI. Next, we are going to initialize the project with running React 360 in it, the name of our application. Uh, here it's Hello360. This will install all of the dependencies that we need in order to run the project. And then we will navigate uh, to the uh, browser, to localhost 8081, and we will see if everything will, uh, will work fine. We need to see the following. A basic scene with a panoramic image of stars. And in front of us, we need to see a text component with the sentence, welcome to React 360. This is the Hello World application that Facebook created for us. After the init, we get the following file structure. All of the static assets are located under the static assets folder. So if we want to load models, images, videos, sounds, or textures, this is the right place. The entry point for any VR application is the index.vr.js file. And there is also a, the client.js file. This is used for the application configuration. So this is the entry point for our application, the index.vr.js file. We have a basic React component that contains a text component. And we can see the sentence, welcome to React 360. And on the bottom, we register the LO360 component, just like in React Native or React for web applications. So now let's begin building our own application. The app that we are going to build together will present our, our solar system planets. You can use the link on the screen to try the demo right now on your mobile phones or laptops. It's bit.ly slash solar demo, plus all of the uh, demos or the code that you will see here uh, is in my GitHub account. And this is what the application is going to look like. We can see a planet with some text. There is a menu on the right. To change to another planet, we can click on a menu button. And on, on our left, there is a, a view component. There is some additional information about the planet. So to know where to place objects and how to move around the scene, we need to be familiar with the coordinate system. The coordinate system is the same as OpenGL coordinates, meaning that y positive is up, and we use the right-hand rule for rotation. So if this is the y-axis, this is a positive rotation, and this is a negative rotation. We can apply different transformations on any component, just like we do with CSS. The syntax is a bit different than classic CSS, but should be familiar to those who code in React Native. So if I want to place an object anywhere other than 0, 0, 0, I will use translate. If I want to change its size, I will use scale. And if I want to rotate it along a certain axis, I will use rotate. Just like React Native, React 360 provides a set of, primi of basic primitives used to construct user interface. This is a powerful feature of React 360. Developers can now use the same styling and layout system across web, React Native, and VR. And this opens the doors to directly sharing layout styles across these platforms. View is the most fundamental component for building a UI. Vue is a container that supports layout with flexbox, style, and touch handling. Vue maps directly to the native view equivalent on whatever React Native is running on, whether that is a UI view, a div, Android view, etc. Vue is designed to be nested inside other views and can have zero to many children of any type. Text is a plain React component for displaying text. And text also supports nesting and styling. And image, a React component for displaying different types of images. But keep in mind that you must manually specify the dimensions of your, image, of your images. Image dimensions here in React 360 are specified in meters. 
and it is not possible to predict the intended dimensions from the pixel width and height of the original image. So now let's go back to our solar system application and add a panoramic image. You can create panoramic images using special 360 cameras or nowadays even with your mobile phones. If you only need to set the background once during your application lifetime, so this is the easiest way, you need to go to the client JS file and do React 360, set background, and to provide the URL, the path to your uh, background. Uh, besides images, you can also load videos, 360 videos. If your background is dynamic, such as in a multi-room environment, you'll want to control it from your React application. And this is something that is possible through the environment module. You just import it, import environment from React 360. And in the same way, set the background. You need to provide the path to your image or, or to your 360 video. So this is my JPEG, my panoramic image of, star, now, of stars. Now let's look, how it, let's see how it looks like in 3D. So this is the result. And our sphere is the cosmos. You can see that the image surrounds us. So that was the way to load panoramic images or videos. Now let's talk about the Flexbox layout system. In React 360, we can lay out components in 3D using Flexbox. The library used is CSS layout, and the syntax is more or less identical to the web Flexbox. As you can imagine, using Flexbox to lay out content on a 2D plane is not optimal for a 3D experience. So it's a common practice to lay out the content on a cylindrical plane, and this will give us a 2.5D feel. In our application, I created a menu to navigate between planets. So this is our menu. It's basically a view that contains other views, one view per planet. And we can see that we also have a text component with the name of the planet. So this is our menu, a view with nine views inside, one for each planet. So we built a menu for navigating among the planets. Now we want to make it clickable. In VR, we interact with objects in a different way than the web or than a mobile. We don't necessarily click on something. It may be enough that we look at an object for a significant amount of time in order to trigger an event. Other than looking, we can also press a controller in order to trigger a reaction. To make our scene interactable, we are going to use a component called VR button. This is a helper component that manages the interaction state machine. By default, a VR button has no appearance and will only act as a wrapper to capture events, but it can be styled in the same ways as a view or a text or, image or the image component. So when press pressing uh, on a button in our menu, we are going to store the planet ID under the current planet variable, and we will use it later on. So let's take a look at our menu again. Now when we press a button, we are updating the current planet variable in our state. And as a result, the header component updates re-render. Next, I want to talk about loading models. There are many types of model format, formats out there, Ob OBJ, STL, Collada. They may come with a built-in animation. They may come with a material or even with a texture. At the moment, React 360 supports the Wavefront OBJ file format and the GLTF file type. So under the static uh, assets folder, I've created a folder for models and another folder for textures. What are textures? They are basically images, PNGs, or JPEGs that wraps the 3D model with UV mapping. React 360 provides a component for loading models called entity. So let's load Earth. Here is our planet declaration. 
We can see uh, that we, are, uh, we need to provide an object and a material if we want, and we are using a utility called asset. This allows us to load assets straight from the static assets uh, folder I've showed you before. The model's ability to define a style enables us to apply different transformations, such as scaling, rotating, and translating, so we can move or scale the model. And here is dynamic loading according to the current planet variable. So let's see a demo. Now, when we are changing the current planet, we are causing a new model to load every time. To make our scene more interesting, we can add animations to objects and layouts. There are two ways to create animations in React 360, using the animated library or any third-party library for JavaScript animations, or manually with request animation frame. So this is an example of request animation frame. What I want to do here is rotate a planet. The rotate function in this example is called in a loop hopefully at least 60 frames per second, and on each call, we are advancing the rotation by a certain delta. And this is the result. We can see that the planet is rotating slowly. And if we switch planets to a new model, if we, if we will switch, the new model will still rotate around itself in the same way. So now let's see an example of how to use the animated library for animations. So when a button is pressed, we want to make it look like it bounces a bit. And also when a planet appears, we want to give it a nice little bounce. In the animated library, this, is, this effect is called a spring effect. And in the bounce function, you can see the implementation for that. The animated library is uh, built in React 360. You can just import it, import animated from React 360, and uh, use it normally, just like in React Native. So let's look at the bounce effect. Now when we look on a menu button, when, when we click on a menu button, we can see that there is a spring, there is a bounce, and also the new model appears with some bounce. And here is the final application where we learned React 360, all of the basics, most of the basics. We are inside a panoramic image where we loaded an image of stars. We can see a header with two texts inside. Below that is a loaded model. On the right, this is the menu. A click on the menu switches to a different uh, planet with a bounce. And the menu button also has a spring to it. And if we look to our left, we can see additional information about the model. This is just a view component with text, and even the button is a view component with some styling. As I mentioned before, React 360 is based on 3.js, but only uses a portion of its properties. The main feature of React 360 is the ability to create user interfaces in 3D. But when we want to develop complex, 3D experiences and, and dive deep into 3.js, we need to do some hacks or try to extend React 360 to include those capabilities. In order to use different materials, lights, and shaders to access different properties of an object or manipulate it, we need to ext extend React 360. And as a result, we are always trying to keep both of the libraries in sync, and this is too difficult. So now I want to show you a different way. If we don't care if the user interface itself is in 2D and we want to focus on the 3D content, we can split the UI from the 3D engine so all of the UI is a plain React and all of the 3D content is 3.js. We're going to create a separate class that controls the 3.js scene. And the way to interact with it will be by calling the class methods directly, or if you are using a state management library such as Redux, you can create a middleware for that and just dispatch actions. 
So now let's take a look at such a class and learn how to initialize a basic tree.js scene. Here in the init function, we are getting a reference to an element from React. This is a, a component. This element will hold the tree.js canvas. Then we are crea creating a new perspective camera and a WebGL render. And we can see on the bottom that we are calling the animate function. This will create a loop that causes the render to draw the scene every time the screen is refreshed. On a typical screen, this means 60 times 60 frames per second. And from this point, 3.js is fully integrated, and we can manipulate the scene easily and use all of the features that 3.js offers us. In this function, for, for example, I'm adding a new mesh to the actual 3.js scene. I'm defining a new box geometry and a new mesh normal material. And I'm adding a, a, this cube to our scene. And this is the result. We can also animate this mesh in the animate uh, function by advancing its position on each frame of the render loop. Here, according to the time, this dot time, uh, I'm moving the position, the y position of the cube with a limit from the cosinus function. This is a trick from uh, games that was built uh, in the 80s or in the 90s. And this is the result. Besides changing the position, we can also rotate, scale, or modify the actual model. So this is another example in the render loop. I'm advancing the rotation, the x rotation and the z rotation by a, a constant um, delta, as we can see here. And now we are going to look at a few uh, demos. You can use this link on your mobile phone. And you can try it right now. After splitting React and 3.js, we can use different loaders. Unlike React 360, which only supports the OBJ file format, now we can load different file types that 3.js supports, like STL or Colada, or like this model that comes with a built-in animation. And we can also use different materials and control their properties, such as metalness or roughness. And we can load to the scene different lights that will affect our objects, such as ambient light, hemisphere light, uh, spotlight, and many, many more. Now we can access the actual model and manipulate its geometry. The geometry is basically a set of points that define the model's vertices and faces. And here in this example, with a simple for loop, I'm rotating each vertex according to his uh, y position. I wrote a blog post about it in Medium. If you want to uh, learn how to do it, it's really, really easy. To make the scene more realistic, we can add third-party libraries that simulate physics. This will add to our scene gravity, collision detection, friction, different forces, and much, much more. Because we have access to the render loop, now it is easier to animate objects. So in this example, I'm getting input from the device's microphone, and I'm controlling the cube's y position. I'm giving them a uh, y force according to the microphone average. And let's see a top view for that. This is something that you, try, you can try right now on your mobile phones. Now, it, it is also easier to integrate different controllers that affect our scene, such as leap motion or Vive controllers. Here we can see leap motion with 3.js. You can touch the objects with your bare hands. But if we still want the VR experience, we need to add three things to our scene. The first is the web VR polyfill. This is a JavaScript implementation of the WebVR spec that will work on any platform. Second is the VR controls that will allow us to look around the scene using the headset. 
And lastly, the VR effect. This will give us the stereoscopic vision that we uh, talked about in the beginning when, when we talked about virtual reality concepts. React 360 is relatively new and lacks some of the core features of 3JS. For a very basic project that relies primarily on layout, I suggest using React 360. But for projects that use ad advanced features of 3JS, I would instead recommend integrating 3JS into React on your own. And this will give you much more flexibility and access to the full range of features that the library offers. I hope that you found this talk instructive, and I'll be more than happy if you will share your future experiences with me. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference.